want to know uh, the trash talk to you. How many of you, by show of hands, know who the boys in the is? If you know who the Bundys are, okay, the Hammonds, Joe Robertson. Okay, great. So this is this is a more educated bunch. I can appreciate that. Okay, I will give you a little backstory on who my dad was to me. Many of you know who he was through the media, through some of his videos, but my dad was my number one hero since I was a little He was someone that was always the first to be there to help. He was the first one to give. He was the first one to, if you called him, he was there. I can't tell you how many times I would call my dad at three o'clock in the morning because I knew no one else would talk to him so that I could get my dad time. And he would answer by the second ring as if he was fully awake. And I know he was because he goes to bed early. He was someone who sacrificed his life long before he stepped out of his truck. He lived every day sacrificing it for his family, for his neighbor, for his country. And the way he did that was by the small choices he made every day. Being, he studied, he educated himself on what the Constitution was, the founding principles. He studied the scriptures because Honestly, we, I feel he felt that the scriptures and the Constitution go hand in hand. He took care of his family. He put us first always. I, I cannot tell you how I had to be careful what I asked of my dad. Because if I asked, he would be there to help. And most of the time, you would never know the burden it was on him. So he would do it with a smile on his face act like he didn't just drop a million things to come out and help you. And I, I live in Texas right now. My dad, my family ranch is in Arizona. I was having a hard weekend because I missed my family. My dad drove to Texas. It was like less than 24 hours he was there. He drove to Texas though. April 1st, it was my birthday. Great birthday surprise. That was the last time I saw my dad. But I'm so grateful that I had the father I had to come all the way down there. Otherwise, instead of celebrating the, or celebrating, I don't know if that's the right word, this April will be the two year anniversary since the last time I saw my dad. Had he not come down, it would have been almost three years since I was able to see my dad. He was, in his own words, a simple redneck rancher. He was nobody. We all sometimes say that about ourselves, you know, we're nobody. We're just, you know, average Joes living life. This average Joe decided that when he saw his neighbor in trouble, he was no longer going to stand for it. There were very few things that could get my dad's temper going, but bullying was one of them. The few times he got called in, or my grandma got called into school, was because he had beat up somebody that had picked on a little guy or who couldn't defend himself. I think it happened like three times or something. He was a man who stood on principle regardless of the cost. He stood on faith knowing that as long as he did what was right, God would take care of things. For me, I thought that meant my dad would come home. I thought he would protect him, that the worst case scenario was he would end up in prison. It didn't happen that way, obviously. But he did come, but God did take care of us. My family, our only wants that haven't been satisfied is the fact that we want our dad home. We want to be able to call him at three o'clock in the morning or to call him and say, hey, I miss you. Will you come visit me? But otherwise, we've been taken care of. My dad loves to teach. It is because of him that I have so much of the education I have now. I took it for granted. 
I can't tell you this, last year has been like a crash course in conservative, constitutional, original to everything. I'm just like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know this. My dad, when we came home, he's like, all right, children, come upstairs. We're gonna learn about the Constitution or something. And we're like, oh, not again, dad. Like another two hour seminar. And when we come home for Christmas for two weeks, we have like three of those, you guys. It was like, come on, dad. Like, you know, as normal teenagers, except I was, you know, an adult with kids at the time too. So I can't blame it quite on my teenage years. But I just wanted to play games. I'm like, let's go play a board game. And he taught because it was important. And I bet you so many times he was like, do my kids even listen to me? Like, all the time. I do that with my own kids. I'm like, are they ever listening to what I'm teaching? And I promise you, they are. Whether it's grudgingly at first or not, they are listening. And there might be some point in your life where something just flips the switch for them. And they're all in. For me, watching my dad get murdered was that switch. I was a very good background supporter. I'm like, hey dad, you do what like you do. I'll support you from home because I could rationalize it. I am a young mom. I have four little kids. If you saw them, my oldest just turned five. It goes five, four, one's almost three, and one will almost be two in March. It sounded really bad when I was like, I have four kids, three and under. So I rationalized it. You know, I'll support you, Dad. I'm so proud of you. You know, go and do what you need to do. But I was guilty of shirking my personal responsibility onto my father. And so, so much today in our society, we shirk our personal responsibility to defend our liberty, defend our freedom, defend our life. And that list goes on. Like, we are all shirking responsibilities. I can't tell what. Most of us are shirking responsibilities in some way. We have to realize that the, our natural rights that we get because of God, which is our life, our liberty, our property, those will not maintain themselves. If they are yours, if you will claim them, if you will use them, and if you will defend them. You cannot do one without the other. If you lose one of them, like property, or life, or poor liberty, any of those, you are starting to lose the other ones. The most common one, so I've been studying a lot of this book. This is called The Law. Many of you have seen, I've made so many Facebook posts on this book, it's not funny, I'm sorry, but it's that important. This book defines um, property. I never understood the concept and how vital our ability to own property was. I mean, how many of you own something right now, like a vehicle, a car, land? How many of you actually own them? Oh. Or are you renting them? Yeah, really. If you don't pay your property tax, how long will you live there? If you do not do your vehicle registration, how long will you be able to drive it? They have taken away one of our natural rights, which is property, and because of that, they have leaked into your lives in so many different avenues, and we don't even realize it. Like, I was raised, you know, you you renew your vehicle's registration every year. Like, I didn't know any different. Many of us don't know any different, because our great-great-grandfathers and so forth down the line have slowly, through apathy, have lost these freedoms where we are basically paying tribute to the government to live. In England, what our founders came from was you had a house of lords. The lords made the laws and the common man followed the laws. You could, they had huge properties that they basically would rent you. And you were tenants on it and you would pay, you know, them your rent but you did not own it because the lords owned it because the king had given it to them. Therefore, they were slaves. And tell me, when these lords are in their house making laws, are they thinking about the little guy, about the common man? What do we have right now? Yeah, we have basically, like, our, the, 
not all of them, most people in the Senate, the House of Representatives, it's like a family, uh, what do you call it, occupation now? It's like, well, I was a senator, now you be a senator. And that was not how it was meant to be. It was meant to be a service where you don't do it for life because you obviously have to still have a life, but you went into office to serve your country because freedom isn't free. And you had to maintain it. But so many of us got lax. Yep. Way back when, we got lax. We're like, well, you take care of it, that's cool. Like, I'm just gonna go farm. That's cool, except it wasn't. I mean, we, we as a people need to start taking responsibility for our freedom. And so many times we're like, well, I'm ready to die for it. I'm like, well, what are you dying for? Have you read the Constitution? Have you even started living for it? My dad sacrificed his life long before he stepped out of that vehicle. He did things daily for this country. He did things daily for our family. Mm -hmm. He lived for the Constitution. He lived for our country. He loved our country enough to sacrifice some comforts to educate himself, educate those who would listen. He was an incredible example to me about what it takes to live for our Constitution. The only reason he became a hero in so many others' eyes and not just his little girl's eyes is because he did the things he needed to do while he was living that he could become that man. We look up to him because of who he was. You watch his videos and you see the genuineness of him. You see his love for country and his fellow man. So many times I ask people like, how do you like how did you even find my dad in the world of internet and stuff? I'm like, and then why? Why do you love him so much when you've never even met him? And every time, it's because his character shone through what little bit we all saw. Well, you guys saw him. I gotta see a lot more. Not enough in my opinion. But that's just because I'm a huge daddy's girl. Currently <coughs> My family is in the middle of two lawsuits. Well, the beginning. It feels like the middle of two have been going on it for like a year. Two lawsuits. One is obviously the wrongful death suit of my father. This last week, my mom had a, an informal congressional hearing in Arizona with um, nine representatives and senators. They're going to start writing letters to get a congressional hearing. We're hoping to soon press for a formal one, because it's called informal. So we need to be a little formal, because we need to get it done. So not only that, we have filed the paperwork against the Oregon State Police and the FBI. That, we don't know how long it will take to do it. It's taken us a year. We've had to jump through so many hoops. Oregon refused to take our stuff, because you have six months deadline to file all of these paperwork in order <coughs> Otherwise, you are no longer allowed to sue for wrong to death against the government. <coughs> kind of ridiculous. So we're jumping through hoops. Oregon's making it as difficult as possible for us. But God willing, we got it done. And then the, the BLM, the Bureau of Land Management, has been hassling my mom since the day my dad was here. They have been bullying her. They make her jump through hoops. Then they make her jump through other ones. She finally got lawyers on it, and the lawyers, after almost nine months, is like, what is going on? So we're supposed to put our cows back on the range. My mom was paying, I want to say about 6,000 in feed a month to feed our cows on a lot, because they wouldn't let us put it on our, um, our land, our land right. And, the day we finally like, well, if you pay these fines, if you pay 12,000 in fines, you can do it. That was the hardest thing our family, I think, has done. Because like, we're not standing for what dad stood for. Like, how can we do that? And my poor mom, you know, she's just so anxious over it. You know, she's like, she wants to honor her husband. And ranching wasn't her dream, but here she is trying to carry it on. 
so she pays the 12000 My grandma runs it into town, and we do the first day cattle drive. It's on horseback, so 15 miles. Takes all day. Takes all day. And we finally get to the camp. We're breaking it down. Gratefully, the first leg is over. We're trying to eat dinner. My grandma comes driving up, and she's like, they wouldn't take it. They don't recognize you as whatever. And we're like, wait, wait, you just said if we paid this, we're okay. And they told her, they threatened her that if she was to take the cows onto the land, that they would arrest her. So we sit up all night, fretting, like, do we just put the cows up on the land? Because that, that land, right, is ours? And risk our mother going to jail? What do we do? For lawyers, <clears throat> we'll find something else. We'll find a way, find a way, don't do it. Stay out of jail. We cried, we prayed, we did everything. And in the morning, we had a couple of the bunnies with us. We decided to get a semi and haul them to my aunt's permit, who was kind enough to let us use hers. So we put them out there. And now we're, now we're kind of human stinking mad. We're like, we're so sick of being bullied. You took our dad from us. You're making our lives as miserable as possible to see people like, you know, give you what you want, but I don't think they've realized that the more they bully us, the louder we're going to get. They should start, I think, getting a little wiser. I mean, who takes a man who has nine daughters or eight daughters and a wife? Like, has, have they not heard of the, the, like, the quote, hell hath no fury is a woman scorned? Oh, really? <laughs> There's nine of us ladies who are pretty, pretty ticked off. And then the boys, of course. So, the lawyers finally found something a regulation made by the BLM, the Bureau of Land Management. It states that in the case of, like, in the case of a death of the permittee, you have two years to settle all the fines, all the other things, without interruption of the permit. So according to their own regulation that they wrote, which by the way is not constitutional, but it's still the regulation that they wrote, the lawyer takes it to him and says, why does this not work for Jeanette? Why is this not working? We don't do it that way. That was their answer. We don't do it that way. I'm sorry, excuse me, you wrote this. You can't just pick and choose which ones you're going to use. But we just don't do it that way. That was the final straw for my mom. She is now doing a lawsuit against the BLM. She got a, an attorney. It was the one up in Oregon, uh, Mumford's, Mumford Second, um, Oregon's Bill Pot, I believe. It, like, it's going to be about a two hundred thousand dollar lawsuit. Takes who knows how long. But she is so sick of them, of being bullied, and we all feel like, you know, what more can you do to us? We'll fight you because you've already taken from us our father, our husband. Like, there's not much more you can do. And we do not want other people to have to suffer. So we're not going to roll over so that some other American gets bullied. So that some other daughter has to, you know, wake up one day and realize her dad was taken from her way too soon. My dad used to make jokes with us. You know, you're all going to be in wheelchairs and I'm pushing you around. Because he worked out every morning. I do not work out every morning. <laughs> he was someone that was very rigorous and staying fit. So he planned on living a good long life. He planned on being the one to play with the grandkids while we were sitting in the rockers. We do what we do because we do not want other people to feel the pain that we have felt. Our dream is not ranching. My mother's dream was never ranching. Yet here she is, her and my little 18-year-old sister running a ranch. We were, my mom was considering selling it at the beginning. You know, we could just sell it and be done with all this. That would be the easy way. But the more they bullied her, the more she refused. She's like, you know what? I don't really, I'm not a ranching fan. But on principle, I'm going to keep this, I'm going to win, and then I'll see what I do at the ranch. But until then, 
on principle, we were not going to just give up and be like, well, we'll sell it, make it someone else's problem. It is our problem, whether we liked a ranch or not. <laughs> we only, seriously, guys, we only did it for our dad. It brought our dad so much joy. <laughs> I'm full time ranching hard. It's a lot of work. It's it's not so so awesome. But she was still standing. We were still standing, and we will continue to teach. We will continue to make sure that. As many people as we can tell about who our dad was, the real story, not the media version, we will. Because our dad's dream was freedom. Not just for himself, not just for his family, not just for his grandkids, but for everyone. I can't think of any better way to honor my father and all that he's done for me than to help him continue that dream. So, I ask you all tonight, are you willing to be free? It is not easy. It never will be. It will take a lot of work. It will take a lot of responsibility. You will probably alienate some people that you've had in your life forever because they do not agree. Mm -hmm. But are you willing to sacrifice your comfort? Are you willing to sacrifice, I don't know, are you willing to endure the heartache that will come from it? It's not enjoyable, believe me. My hate mail is super fun to read in the morning. Try not to read it, it's not healthy. But it's not easy. And it'll take time. And it'll take effort. How many of you have voted? You don't have to raise your hand. In your mind. How many of you voted for local representatives? How many of you have voted voted last time for your governor that's in place? For your city council? How many of you voted? How many of you go and attend and see what's going on at the city level? Do you know, this is how ridiculous it is. You were supposed to have representatives and senators, their primary job was to make sure states stayed sovereign from the federal government. So when they met, it was to make sure that the federal government wasn't making laws to make us all one huge lump. Kristen Hall, this last weekend I learned from her something that totally blew my mind. I was like, what? So you know how Germany is part of the UN? Yet, Germany is not the same as France. They are two separate countries, even though they are all under the UN. They are sovereign. States are supposed to be sovereign, even though we are all under the United States. Yet they have lumped us together, and they try to make regulations and laws throughout it. Our states are supposed to be checking the federal government. Our representatives and senators aren't supposed to be helping them amass power. I mean, our the federal government lays claim to one third of the United States, you guys. That is like almost all of Europe. That is huge. In Nevada, they own like over 80% of Nevada. And do you know that if you commit a crime on this federal lands, you now have to deal with the federal court. You don't get to deal with the state, you go to the federal. And the federal people, they make their own laws, mm -hmm. they execute their own laws, and then it's their own judges who prosecute you. Mm -hmm. That power was supposed to be divided yet on federal land, so one third of the United States. We are basically no longer free citizens, but servants to a federal government. And you know how easy it is to break, break a law there? I'll give you an example. On some of the national forest parks, if you have a camera without a permit, and that includes your phone, you have just committed a felony. Do you guys know how hard it is to live a life? A normal good life after you have a felony on your name. So if you step out of line, you know how easy it is for them to ruin your life? Mm -hmm. 
everyone saw in plain daylight. My dad walked out of a truck with his hands in the air and he was murdered. Yet, a year later, we do not know the names of the individuals who took the shot. We do not know the names of who called for it. We do not know the names. And so far, they have not been held responsible. How is it that we've gotten to a place that our government can create such atrocities, show you the video, and walk scot free. Why is it that we as individuals, when we stand up for something that's right, are afraid? Because if you stand for the Constitution, you can get in trouble. My dad was labeled a terrorist. You know what that means? He no longer has American rights. They can put him in prison indefinitely, no charges. It is scary to do what is right in this country right now because of how out of control the government is. That is so devastating. I get people all the time, I want to do it, but I'm afraid they'll like take my kids. That's one of my fears. I want to do it, but I'm afraid they will take away my Second Amendment right. We, as a country, need to stand up and remind our public servants that they are our servants mm -hmm. and that we are the masters. But to do that, you have to know what your rights are. On this table, I have a few more constitutions left. I need to order so many more. I'll get to it one of these days. If you do not own a pocket constitution, get one. They are free. I will continue to buy them with my own money and give them to every single person I know after I buy some groceries for my kids, of course. Because so I gotta feed them first. <laughs> I have a few more of the law books. If you want a good understanding of black and white, what law is, I have a few. I'll give them to you for my cost. They're three bucks. Educate yourself. Then educate those in your circle. The more you learn, the easier your path of what you should do next will open. I can't tell you what you should do next, what you should do next, what you should do next. Everyone's path is gonna be different, but each of you have the potential that you do not even understand. My dad would have never guessed, never guessed that this would have happened. He was a common man, average Joe, simple redneck, who made a huge difference because he decided to stand. So I invite you all to stand with me. I will continue, if I have to, to do it alone. But many of you here have proven I don't have to. And that, that helps, that helps a lot, you guys. My dad often quoted, when a man stands for freedom, he stands with God. And we're to stand alone, who is still standing with God. What more do you guys need? You might feel alone so many, so, so many times. You might feel alone in your beliefs, in your desire to help. You are never alone. Freedom is a worthy cause. It is a worthy investment of your time. I, as a mom of four little kids, implore you all to do what you can because I do not want them to inherit what I have inherited. My dad can no longer stand for them, so now I am standing. My husband is standing. My siblings are standing. My mom is standing. She's dynamite. Like, she was a background lady, and now she comes up and speaks, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, that's my mom. She's so cool. I'm like, I like I, I'm starstruck by her. But... Thank you guys for coming out tonight. By doing so, you all took a step to stand and learn more. And as a community, support each other and myself. So thank you. It means a lot. I know there are five million things you could be doing tonight. I appreciate you driving out. I appreciate everyone who helped set it up, bring out food. 
food should be a thing at events now. Maybe I'll just start adding that. <laughs> Enjoy it. McDonald's is not quite the same. But I will give probably about 30 minutes, 15 to 30 minutes, if you guys want to do ask any questions that I can answer. So I probably should have warned you before you did your speech. Every last person in here is a domestic terrorist when we've all stood with your dad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we're proud of that fact. 